professor started talking about me, to me about his test, his test and how we lose three to 400 people a year from, from uh, co-related diseases who never, never worked in a mine. Never worked in a mine. Now I remember why I told you about this country, as great as it is, and we can do all kinds of things, and become so powerful and so wealthy, that we don't know what coal does to our people. The day Professor Michael Hendricks was at my place, I had a bunch of students from Virginia Tech there. I had students come from me from all over the world. I had this since July, since this, this past July to December 1st, I had almost 900 people come to me and visit. They signed my register. I keep an ongoing register. As of July, as of December, I've had over 14,000 people come to see me since I began keeping records and so on and giving them a tour. Now, when the professor was there that day, the students came and they were going to stay all night. You can't. And we had a meeting that day and had a lot of people come in and I gave them several tours that day. And quarter after three, the professor himself left, and another a scientist friend of mine, his name is Alan Twiddle, he was there, he left. Uh, although Alan Twiddle was also one of the scientists who came up with uh, what the kids at Marsh Fork Elementary School are having to live with. I'm going to touch on that in a little bit too, but 3.30 that day, they give a whistle, a sound, and on my place they don't generally blow their whistle, they just go ahead and dynamite, and if you're in the way, you get it. You get caught if you're in the way. But that day, they, 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 they give a whistle for some reason or another. The whistle is they hit, they blow a whistle before, and then after, after the, uh, uh, the dynamic blast, they blow another whistle, a clearing whistle, so you go back on the site. That day, when they did, I, th I told the young people, I was 16 of them. I said, they're going to blast. You've got two minutes to get out there. And you just look straight out. If you get to the uh, mound, just look straight out and you'll see it. They're going to blast, you know. And so they all oh, ran. And yes, they let an enormous blast off that day, yes. And all of a sudden, shortly after, shortly after, and you've heard me talk on this, Chuck. You know I'm telling you the truth. Shortly after, the young people come running back. Come running back. And there were several of them that couldn't breathe. They, they just couldn't breathe. And so he took, I think, six of them to Charleston Memorial Hospital. And they, you know, the kids didn't put the tents up, they kept waiting, kept waiting, kept waiting. And about 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, the other people came back. They wouldn't stay. A week later, a couple of the young people that were there that weekend came back, and I said to them, did any of these people have breathing problems before they got here? Did he, did he have trouble, you know, asthma, what? And then the young people, one of the ladies, the girl that was there, she came back to take soil tests, that's what she wanted. And she was telling me, no, she said, I, I, I was one of them, I never, you know, I didn't know what was going on, I just couldn't breathe, you know. Now, here, <clears throat> three years ago, March, March 15th, three years ago, they snuck in a chemical on us called Tetra. Now, uh, we have a veteran from, the, from Vietnam here, I, I believe, this young man right here in front of me. In Vietnam, they used this, uh, not in Vietnam, but World War II. It was an explosive used during World War II. And so the, uh, your government, my government, the state of West Virginia got together and they went concocted this idea. Tetra always banned since World War II. And they wanted to get rid of the mountain, but they couldn't, couldn't get rid of the tetra. They had to sit on it. So they figured, bring it up here and we'll use it to blow the mountains up. The tetra itself was oldest, tasteless, very, very ta dangerous, very dangerous. And we only found out about it because when they took the workers to, to the hospital, they had to tell what they were treating them for. And they had a very, very small article in the paper about it. Very small print. Caught by accident. So, we, we found out about it. Now here, on March the 12th of that same year, uh, uh, 2007, we were going to lead a march. We were going to lead a march on, on the DEP for the Tetra that they snuck in, not only on, not just on me, but in Bob White, West Virginia, on a lady by the name of Maria Gano. 
and we've been having this fight. But when he brought this tetra all in, didn't tell anybody, all these people getting sick, we've already had a high rate of cancer. We got the highest rate of cancer across the country in a certain area here. Nobody's saying anything. Okay? So, I read in the paper. Another silo has been okay for the March for School besides the one that's there. The one that's there is illegal. Okay, high rate of students there, 200, 233 kids, very high rate of them go around in the hallways all the time, all day long. The scientist we had up on the mountain, his name was Alan Twiddle from California. Here he is, he'd done a test, he figured out what these young people were having to go through from kindergarten to the sixth grade. From kindergarten to the sixth grade, they're breathing the same thing that a deep miner's breathing. How would you like to have a child, 12 years old, with the symptoms of black lung disease? How would you like that? Why is it okay for the state of West Virginia or your government or mine to make it okay? It's not okay. They okay this year. Preparation plan. A preparation plan is where they clean the coal. Where they clean the coal and they store it right up on the mountain, 1,200 feet or 1,200 yards, rather, from the kids. It's already been ready to break. It leaks already, you know. All right. So I read in the paper that they were going to name Joe Manson's wife as head of education that same week. Okay. This was March 16th now. So instead of me taking in almost 200 people to the DEP's office, going to go in and pull a citizen's arrest on the head of mining because of what he brought with the Tetral, I know damn well I'd get arrested. He wouldn't get arrested, I would. Tetral's illegal, right? Tetral is illegal, by all means illegal. This is, yes, yes. It's like giving somebody a pistol. This young lady over here, I wouldn't trust her for a pistol, but I'd give her one. <laughs> you know, and and put, a, put a bullet in it and go like that and say, here, go ahead. Yes. And when you understand that while people are, are, are unnerved, or, or, you know, my friend over here, Jenny, said to me today, he says, I don't know if I can talk in front of the crowd. I said, think of the reason I brought you here. And think of the anger you had when they didn't ask you your permission when they did things to you. Yes. And so we went to the Capitol. We want to go in and demand to talk to the governor's wife because she's head of education. She said no about these kids. We go, before we go, I tell the young people that's with me, there are going to be people hurt that day. There are going to be people who arrested that day. There are going to be people going to the hospital that day. I didn't know I'd be the first of all three that day. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I was. I think it's because of my shirt. I don't know. No, I didn't have my shirt on, but actually, when we went to the governor's office, he was there. I approached the secretary. Well, I tried to get a message to him. I said, we'll wait, we'll wait. There was 10 of us that went in initially, and then another almost 200 come in behind him, and they were just chatting and singing, and it wasn't making no noise, it wasn't beating nobody up, it wasn't scratching the marble walls or nothing, you know, it wasn't even writing on them, you know. And all of a sudden,